just catching my breath. I can't, I feel like I couldn't hardly breathe. I, it scared me to death. Chaos at Kroger. Two people killed, one man arrested. What we're learning about his criminal history as the mayor prepares to hold a news conference. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rachel Collier. Chen, family members identify one of the shooting at the Stony Brook Kroger as Vicki Jones. They provided us with these pictures of her. Meanwhile, Gregory Bush, the man accused of opening fire inside and outside the Kroger in Jefferson Town, faced a judge this morning. WDRB's Lexi Ratterman shows us new video recovered from the scene. Lexi? Rachel, this is the Kroger on Taylorsville Road that was full of chaos and fear yesterday afternoon after two people were shot and killed here. The man police say pulled the trigger was in court this morning, like you said, but I want to show you this new video we uncovered from the scene. Take a look at this from yesterday showing 51 year old Gregory Bush getting arrested. This is minutes after police say he walked into the store and shot a man in the back of his head. An arrest citation continued shooting the man while he was on the ground. That man died on the scene. Witnesses say Bush put his gun in the holster and walked out of the store. Once he was in the parking lot, he shot a woman several times, also killing her. Investigators say a civilian took action and exchanged gunfire with Bush. Neither of them were injured. This morning in court, Bush pleaded not guilty to two counts of murder and 10 counts of wanton endangerment. He stated he was on disability and that was his only form of income. On his Facebook page, he says he is a mentally disabled, paranoid schizophrenic. The judge set his bond at $5 million and immediately denied a request for reduction. The bond is currently set at $5 million. I set that bond and it's going to remain the same. I believe you to be a danger. You are to possess no firearms, to have no contact with any of the alleged uh, victims, families, and no contact with the place of violation, including any Kroger. A motive for the shooting has still not been released. The Jefferson Town Police Department does plan on holding a press conference later on this afternoon. Stick with WDRB as we will bring you any update we get on this situation. Reporting live at the Taylorsville Road Kroger, Lexi Ratterman, WDRB News. Lexi, thank you. And of course, we're still waiting for the mayor's press conference to begin. Court records show Gregory Bush had a history of mental problems. A mental inquest warrant was taken out on him for 2009 domestic assault case, and he was taken to Central State. State Hospital. In the May 2009 case, Bush was accused of screaming profanities at his ex-wife and threatening her. We will get back to more on his mental health history in a moment. We are understanding that Mayor Greg Fisher's press conference is starting right now. Tragedy in J-Town yesterday. I know there's a great deal of speculation about the shooter and possible motives. We will learn more over the coming days and I'm going to hold off on commenting on that specifically until we get more information. But I will say this, we are one city, one proudly diverse and welcoming city, and we have one shared future. Our city and our future have no room for anyone who looks at their fellow human beings with hate or discrimination. There may be questions about mental illness, and there can be no doubt that we must do whatever is needed to get people all of the health care that they but today, I'm just sick and heartbroken and quite angry. I feel that way about any act of violence and cruelty. This one is especially painful because, as has been reported, one of the victims was the father of a member of my team. We love Kelly Watson, our chief equity officer, and well-known community leader. I visited with her and her family last night, and she knows that we're here for her and her family, and we ask everyone, please respect their privacy. Be mindful of what they're going through, a sudden and painful loss that's beyond words to describe, extremely traumatizing. The decent thing to do is to give them whatever time and space and accommodation that they need. Please do that. Part of what makes me feel sick and heartbroken is thinking about what the victims and their families are dealing with. Because yes, this does cl hit close to home, but every act of senseless violence hits close to home for far too many. Ask Reverend James, our Chief for Community, 
today. He's lost members of his flock, of his church, to senseless violence. These are his family members. My bottom line is I'm angry because it seems like none of these murders and massacres hit close enough for many of the people in the position to do something to prevent some of this madness. In Louisville, we've created violence prevention programs that are working. We're working to do more, but we're not going to stop. But at the city level, there's only so much that we can do. Because the hard fact is that most violent crimes are committed with guns. And guns fall under the jurisdiction of the state and federal governments. And every time someone takes a gun and creates a tragedy, what's the response? of our leaders, the ones that have the power to make our country safer, our cities safer, our schools and churches and our groceries safer. They act as if nothing can be done. Sound like the United States of America to me. We're the greatest, most powerful, most resourceful country. Why do we pretend that we're helpless? America's never helpless. America mobilizes. We take on big problems and we get them done. You can see it throughout the history of our country. And we've got a big problem. We have an epidemic of violence. But somehow, a few have become so beholden to politics that they place a higher value on that than on the lives of our fellow Americans. People getting shot at a grocery store, a school, outside a church. Can't we all agree that that is unacceptable? There are ways to make our country safer and still respect the rights of law-abiding gun owners. This idea that it's all or nothing is a false choice, and Americans are dying every day because of it. And I know with all the talk about how polarized and divided we are, coming together, even on something as simple and clear as this, seems impossible. So as we contemplate what happens next, I'd like to remind you of the words of our greatest son, Muhammad Ali. Impossible is just a word done by small men who find it easier to live in the world that they've been given than to explore the power they have to change it. Impossible is not a fact. It's an opinion. Impossible is potential. Impossible is temporary. Impossible is nothing. So as we think about those words, and as we grieve, both as individuals, as our all, and as a community, we're going to keep doing our work, serving the Louisville. And our great city, who've shown such compassion over many years to look out for one another as we come together for the of the city we love and to demand change from our state and federal officials. Thank you for coming out today. That's Mayor Greg Fisher talking about the Kroger deadly shooting, how it affected one of his team. The victims' names are Maurice Stollard and Vicki Jones. Maurice Stollard is the father of the city's chief equity officer. We just got those names from the coroner, and we are, after that press conference is wrapping up, the mayor was just talking about he's sick, angry, heartbroken. He also talked about gun violence and needing to come together, put politics aside, and find a solution to all of the violence that comes from it. Saying there's an epidemic of gun violence in our community and across the nation. And people across the community are honoring the victims of yesterday's shooting. Some people living in the area stopped by last night to place flowers, cards, and candles at Kroger's entrance. Witnesses describe the scene as chaotic with lots of screaming. An off-duty EMT says he saw the shooting and tried to save a woman shot in the parking lot. She was, there was, she was gone. There was nothing that could be done. I feel like I'm just catching my breath. I can't, I feel like I couldn't hardly breathe. I'd, scared me to death. Many who stopped by the scene said they won't let the shooting stop them from chopping there. FBI Louisville says it's assisting the Jefferson Town Police Department in the ongoing investigation. The FBI says it's evaluating the evidence to determine if there were any violations of federal law. 
Police intercept suspicious packages addressed to former Vice President Joe Biden and actor Robert De Niro. Packages addressed to Biden were found at two different mail facilities in Delaware. Officials say they have similar characteristics to the packages containing bombs sent to other prominent Democrats, including Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. A New York City bomb squad recovered a package addressed to Robert De Niro. Another explosive sent to CNN prompted the evacuation of the Time Warner Center in New York yesterday. None of the bombs have detonated. Nobody has been hurt. Gray skies and gloomy today. Katie McGraw explains when showers move in. Katie? Well, you said it. Look at this current sky cam that we have. A very gloomy day on our hands today. This is in Hardin County, and those gray skies are just really prevailing. Trying to get black skies there now. But we do have some showers just down to the south and also the west. This is associated with a low pressure and that low pressure is going to continue to move toward Kentucky. And you see the high pressure that we were enjoying the last two days getting nudged out and instead we're going to bring back the potential for some showers. I do think that we could see some low end rain chances for today, but in comparison to tomorrow, it's not going to be nearly as impactful. It's currently cloudy as I mentioned 49 degrees. We have an easterly wind 5 to 10 miles per hour. That easterly wind at about that speed going to continue tonight and into tomorrow as well. Satellite and radar showing us basically the same story as what the sky cams are showing us from north to south, east to west cloudy all across Kentuckiana and that's going to continue throughout the rest of today. But also look at what advanced track shows us that while we have the clouds temperatures into about the 40s and then eventually into the 50s once we get into the afternoon middle and upper 50s getting close to the lower 60s for our high temperatures. We are going to be seeing just a few isolated showers, but those showers become a lot more likely late tonight and as we head into tomorrow and I only have a really low end rain chance for the afternoon and evening, but that increases substantially late tonight and into tomorrow. I'm going to show you more of advanced track and exactly when the rain moves in and becomes more widespread and when it clears on out coming up. Katie, thank you. A convicted sex offender in Nelson County was accidentally released from jail. 44 year old Hayden Howard was on the loose for more than four days. Howard has a lifetime status on the KSP sex offender registry for child rape and sodomy convictions. The jailer says deputies were releasing him on local charges, but did not realize he was also being held in the jail on a state sentence. The jailer says deputies would have seen his state inmate hold if they checked the computer records. I did reprimand the two deputies for not checking both files. To me, the, the computer file is as important as the hard copy. The Nelson County Sheriff's Office says Howard turned himself in last night. The hepatitis A outbreak is growing in Kentucky. More than 2,000 cases have been reported since last November. The two most recent weeks of data show 80 new cases each week. 14 people have died from hep A in Kentucky and more than 1,100 people have been hospitalized. A new nonstop destination is expected to soon fly out of Louisville International Airport. The big announcement is happening at the Louisville International Airport today. It's not known which airline will provide the service or when it will begin. Governor Matt Bevan is expected to be there for today's announcement. The event begins at noon. The battle of the White House versus a caravan of migrants is plowing ahead. Wait till you see what happens over the next couple of weeks. What President Donald Trump is promising to do with the military as 7,000 people head this way. And the search for a murdered journalist is now centered inside a Saudi official's home, where investigators think the body could be stashed. The number of migrants marching north toward the U.S. continues to grow. John Lawrence explains what the U.S. is doing to prepare for their arrival. More than 7,000 migrants keep pushing north toward the U.S., fighting fatigue during the day, sleeping on the ground at night. They say they hope for a better future. There isn't any work here, she says. We have nothing to live on. Brian Covadrelles spent most of his life in Texas until he was deported to Hong weeks ago. He's walking back to reunite with his three-year-old daughter. She's, she's the one who actually needs me the most, you know, so... And I don't want her to grow without me. The caravan is over 1,000 miles away from the U.S., and things could get more difficult if they reach the border. Wait till you see what happens over the next couple of weeks. You're going to see a very secure border. You just watch. Just watch. Very secure. 
And the military is ready. Mr. Trump is not the only one talking tough about the migrants. Republican House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy told North Dakota radio station WZFG that the caravans might be politically motivated. And as U.S. officials engage in talks with Mexico about how to handle the upcoming situation, a second caravan, made up of about 2,000 people, is also trekking toward the U.S. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince attends a meeting to restructure the kingdom's intelligence after the death of a journalist. He called the murder of Jamal Khashoggi a heinous crime. It was the first time the Crown Prince commented on Khashoggi's death. Investigators are searching the Saudi Consul's residence in a 75-foot deep well where Khashoggi's body might have been stashed. Saudi Arabia says 18 Saudis have been arrested and four senior intelligence officials and an advisor to the Crown Prince have been fired. A woman confronts a thief through her doorbell. What are you doing? Is this Deborah's house? Spoiler alert, it was not Deborah's house. What the homeowner did next to stop the crook and why she actually wishes they got away with what was inside. We are going to be seeing some rain move into the area. Widespread showers possible on Friday. I'm going to time it out for you in greater detail coming up. WDRB weather sponsored by VisionWorks, doctors of optometry. Maybe it's just gray and gloomy today. We will probably dodge showers until later, it looks like. Yeah, I think that if we see any rain today, at least during the daylight hours, they're going to be very isolated. Later tonight is when we have a much better chance to see showers, but this is what we're going to deal with, where it looks threatening for showers basically all afternoon. Temperatures right now still pretty cool, 49 degrees in downtown. We have that easterly wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, and that's going to be consistent throughout tonight and into tomorrow as well. And notice that we have pretty uniform temperatures because we have those thick clouds all across Kentuckyana. So that is keeping that uniform temperatures throughout all of the viewing area. 50 for Litchville and Campbellsville. And you see how basically we've been pulling in those clouds. They're getting a little thicker actually as we got into about the mid morning. We're going to continue to have these clouds throughout the afternoon, evening, all the way through tomorrow because we have this low pressure that's going to be bringing our next chance for rain. So yesterday it was such a nice day with temperatures into the lower 60s and as we had all that sunshine now it's been replaced by the clouds and bringing in all of this rain potential by tomorrow so any of this low end rain chance that we have for today is going to be very different by tomorrow because we have such a greater chance of rain and way more widespread so this low pressure is going to move into the area and you see by tomorrow morning you're going to want to have the umbrella ready for your morning commute or for the kids for the bus stop because of how widespread this rain's going to be. It'll slowly start to taper off by the second half of the day. So if you have evening plans, you might have a chance to see at least spottier showers, but it's going to take a while to dry up. A little bit of a closer view here and how we'll start to see a few showers. Best chance for today down to the south and west and how they start to pull across the area overnight into tomorrow morning. How widespread that rain is by six in the morning tomorrow. It'll continue through the afternoon, but you see that we might have some periods of time where it's dry tomorrow in the afternoon. Eventually it'll taper off. Saturday looks predominantly dry. We'll have at least more dry time and then another chance for rain on Sunday. 58 degrees today, mostly cloudy skies. I think in some locations you might get to about the low 60s, but overall a cool day. 48 degrees today, or excuse me, tonight with rain likely late. And this is what you can expect tomorrow. A rainy start, chilly temperatures. Notice there's not a big change in the temperatures. 48 to start, 50 for our high temperature. So there's not a big change throughout the entire day. <laughs> Something weird happened on Saturday. Few showers. <laughs> but it is going to be rainy on Saturday. Again, we'll time that out for you in greater detail coming up. Katie, thank you. Taking on pharmaceutical manufacturers, Kentucky Attorney General Andy Bashir says he'll announce an eighth lawsuit today related to the opioid epidemic. Bashir has already sued three distributors along with four pharmaceutical manufacturers. His office has awarded a contract to a group of private law firms to work on the lawsuits. Republican Governor Matt Bevin's administration has tried to cancel that contract, but was overruled by a state judge. Bashir is running for governor in 2019 as a Democrat.
Delivering more than just sandwiches, how a Jimmy John's driver ended up giving a veteran a ride to the hospital. Here's what's trending on WDRB.com. Fire rifts through a home in West Louisville. How the people who were inside say a stranger saved their lives. A Charlestown, Indiana Zoo may have violated the Endangered Species Act. Now the owner of the zoo is lashing out at PETA. I'm here. I'm here for the long haul. I'm not going anywhere. You know, and I'm tired of their shit. What PETA claims he did to lions and tigers. A quadriplegic woman gets hit by a distracted driver outside University Hospital where she was part of a research program. How the accident set her back in her quest to walk again. You can check out those stories on WDRB.com. More news is just ahead. WDRB News at Noon starts now. Chaos at Kroger. Two people murdered. New video shows the suspect's arrest. WDRB is digging into his criminal history, plus what we're learning about the victims of this tragedy. You can probably sense it clouding up, and now we are going to be tracking out some rain, certainly impacting your Friday plans. We're going to talk about when we're going to see the most widespread rain and when it clears out. Thanks for staying with us on WDRB News at Noon. I'm Valerie Chin. And I'm Rachel Collier. The man accused of gunning down two people at Louisville Kroger faces a judge. And in just the past half hour, we've learned the names of the people killed. The coroner has identified the two as Mari Stollard and Vicki Jones, who is seen in these pictures. WDRB's Lexi Ratterman was in court this morning as a judge had strict instructions for the alleged shooter. This is the Kroger on Taylorsville Road that was full of chaos and fear yesterday afternoon after a man shot and killed two people here. The man police say pulled the trigger was in court this morning. Video from yesterday showing 51 year old Gregory Bush getting arrested. This is moments after police say he walked into the store and shot a man in the back of the head. An arrest citation states Bush continued shooting that man while he was on the ground. The man died on the scene. Witnesses say Bush put his gun in the holster and walked out of the store after shooting that man. Once he was in the parking lot, he shot a woman several times, killing her. Investigators say a civilian took action and exchanged gunfire with Bush. Neither of them were injured. This morning in court, we heard from Bush for the first time as he pleaded not guilty to two counts of murder and 10 counts of wanton endangerment. Are you capable of hiring an attorney or will you need the services of a public defender? Uh, I believe a public defender. Are you working? No. Do you have any form of regular income? Uh, a disability. Do you own any property? No. On Bush's Facebook page, he says he is a mentally disabled, paranoid schizophrenic. The judge set his bond at $5 million and immediately denied a request for reduction. The Jefferson Town Police Department says they are planning to hold another press conference to update everyone on the situation. Stick with WDRB as we will bring you that information as soon as we get it. Reporting at the Kroger on Taylorsville Road, Lexi Ratterman, WDRB News. And we're getting a chilling look at the suspected shooter just moments after police say he shot those two people. Take a look at this video that appears to show Gregory Bush wandering through the parking lot before getting into his car and taking off. The owner of a nail salon close to Kroger captured the footage. Officers arrested Bush minutes later on Hurstbourne Parkway, just a short distance away from Kroger. Court records show Gregory Bush had a history of mental problems. A mental inquest warrant was taken out on him for a 2009 domestic assault, and he was taken to Central State Hospital. In the May 2009 case, Bush was accused of screaming profanities at his ex-wife and threatening her. In another 2009 case, Bush was accused of hitting a 78-year-old man and grabbing his four-year-old wife. We're continuing to look at his criminal history. We'll have more today on WDRB News at 4. Louisville's mayor says he's sickened and heartbroken by the Kroger shooting. WDRB Stefan Johnson explains the connection the mayor's office has to one of the victims. Stefan? Well, today behind me here at Metro Hall, I saw something that, um, quite frankly, we don't see very often a very emotional Greg Fisher talking about yesterday's fatal shooting at the Kroger location in Stony Brook. Uh, the mayor was emotional, almost in tears uh, at some point, and other people in the room were as well. And that's because there was a connection and because um, they don't have a lot of answers. Right now, uh, Mayor Fisher won't talk about motives or speculation that this may have been a hate crime, but he flat out said, I'm angry. Yesterday afternoon, police say Gregory Bush 
shot and killed two people at the Stony Brook Kroger location. One of the victims was the father of a longtime city official. But today, I'm just sick and heartbroken and quite angry. I feel any act of violence and cruelty. We are one city, one proudly diverse and welcoming city, and we have one shared future. Our city and our future have no room for anyone who looks at their fellow human beings with hate or discrimination. NWDRB News has learned that Gregory Bush has a history of mental illness and he also has had a lot of run-ins with local law enforcement. Meanwhile, later today, the city of Jefferson Town will hold a press conference as well and uh, give us a little bit more information about the shooting and what they've learned about the suspect in this case. Of course, we will carry that for you uh, live on WDRB News. Live in downtown Louisville, I'm Stefan Johnson, WDRB News. Stefan, thank you for the updates. Witnesses say this shooting happened too close to home. They described the scene as chaotic with lots of screaming. Drew Butler believes he saw the shooter just seconds before shots were fired inside the store. He walked what we believe to be the shooter, walked right by me, and just three to five seconds later, you heard a series of gunshots from that aisle. Immediately after the shots, there were a few ladies screaming. Some people continued shopping, just not quite understanding. Who live in the area stopped by last night to place flowers, cards, and candles at Kroger's entrance. The store will reopen tomorrow morning at 7. Clouds today could bring showers tonight. Katie McGraw explains our bigger chance for rain comes tomorrow. Yeah, as you can see, when we look at our radar and satellite, right now we have a lot of thick clouds. And then just down to the south and west is where we have already a few showers. Of course, that's outside of our viewing area, Paducah, Nashville, experiencing some of that light rain at this point. But as we move throughout the rest of today into tonight, and of course tomorrow, that's when we're going to pull some of that moisture closer to Kentuckiana. This is associated with a low pressure. We had all of that sunshine yesterday yesterday that was that high pressure that's now getting pushed up to the north as this low moves into the area. So I do have some low end rain chances for today, but in comparison to tomorrow, it's just much lower and it's not going to have as great of an impact on your day. Two degrees out the door right now an easterly wind five to 10 miles per hour. And again, as we move throughout the day, mostly cloudy skies, temperatures into about the upper 50s. And this is what you see right here. A little shower near Campbellsville, about a 10% chance. Eventually, I increase it to about a 20, 30% chance around the time the sun is setting. And then eventually later tonight, a 70% chance. But that's really in the overnight period. Tomorrow has a much higher chance, nearly 100% chance for rain because it is going to be so widespread. So keep that in mind. But what you see here is still pretty low end. So rain late. Notice that our temperatures covering into about the middle and upper 50s. Tomorrow, there's going to be a much cooler day in store for us with all of that rain. We're going to time it out in greater detail for you and also show you when it clears out and how that impacts the rest of your weekend coming up. Katie, thank you. No one won the $620 million Powerball jackpot, but one lucky person in Kentucky bought a winning $1 million ticket. It was sold in Crestwood, but the name of the store hasn't been released yet. The winning numbers are 3, 21, 45, 53, 56, with a Powerball number of 22. The jackpot now grows to an estimated $750 million, which would be the fourth largest lotto jackpot in U.S. history. The next Powerball drawing is Saturday night. A jury college basketball recruiting insiders guilty funnel to basketball recruits. Adidas executive James Gatto, sports agent Christopher Dawkins, and former Adidas consultant Merle Code were convicted of paying recruits to sign with Adidas-sponsored schools. The trial included testimony about giving $100,000 to Brian Bowen's family so he would commit to UofL. The case led to the firing of head coach Rick Pitino last year. Two Kentucky State Police troopers get suspended after allegedly attacking a man over a Facebook post. David Gabbard filed a lawsuit after Trooper Scott Townsley pulled him over in eastern Kentucky last year. Gabbard said he believed it was an illegal stop and posted about it on Facebook. The next day, Gabbard claims two troopers showed up at his home and attacked him. His attorney shared the cell phone video. Gabbard's attorney says you can hear the trooper say, I did not harass you yesterday. 
The attorney says Troopers Townsley and Joshua Roden were suspended for four days. Kentucky State Police has. Boston Red Sox take a commanding two to nothing lead in the World Series. Boston was down two to one in the fourth inning of game two to the Los Angeles Dodgers. But with two outs in the fifth inning, the Red Sox put three runs on the board. Boston's relief pitchers combined for three innings and didn't allow a single hit. Boston won four to two. Game three is tomorrow night in Los Angeles on WDRB. One very extreme response. What one man found in his parents' home that led to him set it on fire with a blowtorch. Plus, what are you doing? Is this Deborah's house? No, no, it's not. Put my packages back on the on the porch. An attempted thief caught red-handed. The items the thief almost and why the homeowner says she almost wishes the suspect had been successful. A Texas homeowner catches an attempted thief in the act. Mayor Marino explains how she confronted the criminal even though she wasn't home. Am I seeing what I'm really seeing? I thought maybe she was delivering my packages. Michelle Tall says she has seen these type of stories on ABC 13 dozens of times, but when it happened to her on Tuesday, she couldn't believe it. It's very scary. It was during the lunch hour. Tall received an alert on her phone while at work, and when she opened her Ring Video doorbell app, there she saw this woman on her porch taking her packages. What are you doing? Is this Deborah's house? No, no, it's not. Put my packages back on the on the porch. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. That I'm woman so quickly sorry. returns the packages, saying she thought she was at Deborah's house, and then she leaves. She was very apologetic. I kind of felt like maybe she did have the wrong house. But I wasn't sure. We've been having problems in this area. Tall raced home from work to call authorities. I talked to the police officers who came to the house, um, and they did say that, yeah, the people who do these things say those things. They have a plan. Here's the kicker. These heavy boxes with Target logos are not cool gadgets or electronics. So she would have gotten home and been very disappointed to see cat litter. Four giant boxes of cat litter. I kind of wish she might have taken them, but it's a funny situation in her case, but she knows many have been through this scary ordeal, which is why she wants everyone to see the video. I just don't want anybody, anybody to be naive about the situation that it is that time of the year, the packages are getting stolen. Now the neighborhood has the video too, just hey, in case doing? Deborah doesn't truly exist. What are you doing? Is this Deborah's house? So she didn't take my cat litter, <laughs> but just so she knows if this is a real deal, we're watching you. Hey, what are you doing? Mayra Moreno, 13 Eyewitness News. Didn't get away with it. A California man let his fear of spiders convince him to do something dangerous. The man says he was house sitting for his parents in Fresno when he saw a few spiders. He tried to use a blowtorch them and wound up setting the house on fire. The second floor of the home was damaged, but the man got out okay. It took about 30 firefighters to put out the flames. Investigators say the spiders were black widows. Mm. He doesn't like spiders. A sweet surprise for custodian's 60th birthday. The gift students gave him that led to this reaction. It's going to be rainy tomorrow, but that's not our only chance for rain this weekend. I'm going to tell you the other day and time it out for you coming up. WTRB weather sponsored by Vision Works. It is mostly cloudy, and that's how the rest of today. We had such a nice day yesterday, sunny temperatures into the lower 60s. And I think because we have more clouds around, that's going to keep our temperatures capped just a little bit. We have an easterly wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. That's going to be consistent as well throughout the day today. And notice how uniform our temperatures are across Kentuckyana. Upper 50s to the lower 50s, only a couple of degrees separating our coolest number at 47 to some of our warmer numbers like in downtown and the lower 50s. You see how we've been pulling in the clouds over the last 12 hours or so. And now there's a few showers just down to our south and west associated with this low pressure. I I do think that we could potentially see a few stray showers today, especially as we get to the end of the day. Once the sun sets, it increases and overnight our chances skyrocket. 
by tomorrow morning. A great potential to see some widespread rain and very persistent rain too. You see this as that low just travels to the south of Kentuckyana and how widespread the rain goes all the way to the north of Indy. And as we move throughout the day on Friday, we're still going to have a decent rain chance. Second half of the day, they start to become a little more scattered, but you're still going to be having to deal with this rain. So for today, mostly cloudy skies, a few showers down to the south and west would be our best potential rains coming from. And notice how widespread that rain is by 6 a.m. By the time the sun comes up, we've already been dealing with the rain for a while. It starts to become a little more spotty during the afternoon and evening, but you're still seeing quite a bit of rain even as the sun sets on Friday. It finally tapers off. Saturday, I still have a few showers around, but overall a drier day in comparison to Friday. 58 degrees for our high today, 20% chance, but I increased that a lot by tonight. 70% chance for that rain, 48 degrees. And as we head into the weekend, Saturday generally dry, but a new system progresses toward Kentuckyana once again. And you see with that low that we will have that potential for more rain on Sunday. So Saturday, not a great chance for any rain, a little bit of some wraparound moisture. But by the second half of the day on Sunday, we reintroduce that potential for a little bit of some rain. So keep that in mind for your weekend plans that we have a great chance for rain on Friday, a little bit lower on Saturday, and it's high again on Sunday. As we get into next week for Halloween, we do have a nice day on Tuesday, but it does look like we'll have to have some hit or miss showers on Halloween for trick or treating, so also plan ahead for that. At least it'll be warmer on Halloween. Thank you, Katie. Tennessee kindergartners surprise a hearing impaired custodian by singing and signing Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to So sweet. The school you. nurse and teachers help the students happy learn to sign the Happy Birthday song. The custodian, James Anthony, says he was touched by the performance for his 60th birthday. He's been working for the school district since 1991. Very thoughtful. A toddler gets a little frustrated with Alexa. Alexa, say baby shirt. Sure, baby, hold back by say anything on Amazon Music. Alexa, Alexa, say baby shirt. Sure. Wisconsin mom Chrissy shared this video of her daughter's conversation with her Amazon device. Her daughter says she wants to hear her favorite song, Baby Shark, but Alexa just cannot understand. Chrissy steps in to get Alexa to play the popular song. Sometimes Alexa doesn't understand. Her dancing is so cute. <laughs> freaky fast and freaky friendly. A woman accidentally dials up Jimmy John's with a frantic plea. Why Jimmy John's felt compelled to turn it into an extra special delivery. A woman accidentally calls a sandwich shop while trying to find her sick brother a ride to the hospital. This is Jimmy John's. I'm so sorry. I have called him up. I apologize. Um, so yeah, thank you. And I'm going to go now. And he goes, no, 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 wait, wait. Lisa Nagengast's brother in Nebraska was having complications from recent surgery. She lives in Florida. Her brother couldn't find a ride to the hospital and didn't have enough money for a cab. And veteran, apparently he couldn't call 911 without prior VA approval. His sister thought she was calling a caseworker and misdialed. Jimmy John sent a delivery driver, a fellow veteran, to take her brother to the hospital. Till the day I die, if, if another service member needs help, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Sister says she can't thank the driver enough. Mm, what a nice gesture. For our forecast, really quick, some rain's moving in. Yeah, rain more likely by tomorrow, a break on Saturday, and then more rain on Sunday in the afternoon. Thanks for being with us.